Let me know. Let me know. Real good. Okay, cool. It's free. Um, I'm a really cool guy. Um, I know what I'm talking about. And if I don't, then I'm going to bring in a couple of my industry friends. I, I get all the DMs and I don't, I don't mean to, I do, I respond to all of my DMs. I've, I've got the time. It's also important to me. I can't be here and saying, oh no, mentorship this, mentorship that. And then when you guys are DMing me, then I don't respond. But, um, you know, like, I feel like I don't really put the mentorship part enough here. So what I did was this year, I've cut off, um, after I finished my mentorship with the British, uh, British Council and everything that I did there, I decided, you know what, this year, it will depend on how many people kind of, I know a lot of you are going to send send me stuff. I know a lot of you, but, you know, I want a small group. This is a pioneer project. You know, it's, I'm, I'm going to call it creative construction conversations. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know everything. You know, I'm not, I'm not the, the jack of all trades, you know, but I'm a jack of some, but um, I will find other jacks of some trades within the, the construction industry and kind of like expose them to a, to a small group of people. And, you know, after doing the mentorship with the girls last year, I realized there are a lot of people that are being, you know, like being, you know, being outcast because there was there was a certain criteria. Um, um, I was dealing a lot, with, a lot with academia there. So I don't want I don't want the mentorship to just, you know, to just, you know, to just be in academia. So I want to pull in people that are starting out their businesses um, people, and this is, this is, this is not me teaching you how to tender guys. I'm going to say it again. You know, like a lot of people, Pili, can you teach me how to tender? You know, the, you know, filling out a document is the last thing, the last thing that you need to learn. There are so many other things that you need to learn. And I think it's not really something that I can squeeze in, in a 30 minute video. So I'm going to take a group. I'm going to take a group of Let's make it 15. I feel like 15 is like a nice round number for me to be able to kind of, because I don't want to take too many people because I also want to have intimate relations with these people and and kind of, you know, help you throughout this, this process. So creative construction conversations will be starting. Um, I would like you guys to, one, one, you can't be part of my mentorship program if you've not subscribed and you're not following me and you haven't posted my stuff. So I think before the, before we, we start there, take note and and do that. Make sure that you've posted my stuff, you've reposted my stuff, you've tagged me on it. Um, you are subscribed here. So check in that box and see if it's written subscribed. It's free. And um, check if you're following me on Instagram also. Um, I think the post that is going to have like um, a better breakdown of the details is going to be on Instagram. So head over to my Instagram and 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 kind of keep out. So I'm probably going to I'm probably going to take it out. What is it now? End of probably end of March, I would imagine. End of March. I want to have at least about I thought about six weeks. I think we'll talk about um, once I've narrowed it down to the people that I want, um, to the people that I will choose to be on my mentorship program. I think then we'll kind of decide um, how long you want it. Do you want to have it in like straight six week program or do you want to break it into months? Um, but there, man, um, I want I want to spread the word. You know, I want to have um, um, uh, no, I, I don't want to be I, I don't want to be. Uh, such a bad word, disciples. No. What's a good word for disciples? Mm, not, it's not, I almost said Avengers. No, man. Evangelist. Is it evangelist? I think it's evangelist. No, English, uh, English, yeah, it's, what time is it? Yeah, it's, yeah, English is still loading. My English bundles are still loading. So forgive me. Um, so I want a group of people that will understand, man, where where we're going with this. You know, we are not just, you know, we, we don't want to be just a drop in the ocean. We want to move, you know. So if you want to move, if you want to do construction differently, I think it would be smart for you to to enter. Um, I say enter as if it's a competition. I don't I don't want it to feel like a competition. I just, you know, I want it to, you know, if if it's if it's just five people, then five people, but I want it to be really impactful. You know, um, I'm gonna be taking time out of, you know, everything that I'm doing to kind of, you know, to feed into this. You know, I've done mentorship um for the past couple of years, but I've never kind of done like my mentorship, like a mentorship program that I will create or uh, curate and I will kind of, you know, like be you know put my heart into it because I feel like the people that I've mentored there's been some sort of barrier because you're not you're not really in 
in my space. I'm always governed by something, you know? So this one, hey, bruh, we are going to swear each other if I need to swear you. Um, I'm going to get you into a, a point where you understand construction differently. I'm not saying that you're going to be a millionaire by the end of by the end of the six week or, or six month program, but I'm saying that, you know, it's free. Um, I'm a really cool guy. Um, I know what I'm talking about. And if I don't, then I'm going to bring in a couple of my industry friends. So it would be smart for you to look out for, for, for that post. And let's move, man. Let's move. 2024, we're moving for the channel. You can see how pretty I am now. I'm in a studio, you know, like I'm, you know, my voice is crisp. You can see that we're moving into, you know, like a better a better a, a a better platform you know a better a better place to be in but also you know like it wouldn't it's, it's nice seeing me again is it not you can imagine you're welcome so um yeah yeah so i wanted to speak about that and then so this video um as I was saying before, be, um, I'm not going to give you the 10 points of what 2023 was about and what to um, what to kind of um, look out for. Today, I want us to discuss the three C's of construction. So I've got my notes here. Components, compounds, and consumer. So I always like to talk in pictures. Components would be, this is the construction industry, right? Um, what are the different components? I realized that um, when you speak to a lot of people, especially new entrants, um, they're not really aware and they're not really, they, they don't really research the ecosystem. You know, um, if you are not aware of the ecosystem on which you are moving in, then what are you doing? You know, so it's important for you to 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 understand what the different components are within the industry that you're going into. Like, for instance, I'll use me as an example. For me, the different components are heavily, heavily, heavily um, placed on price, right? It's, it's price for all of us, but obviously with materials, like the margins are different. Like, for instance, um, now that I am into contracting, I realized the margins between the, the different margins between supply and 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 contracting are different are so different the way that you calculate your prices the way that you maneuver in terms of getting into like your bottom line it is so different um time value of money is of utter importance what do i mean by time value of money as soon as you start a project, um, whether it's a two month, three month or six month project or a year, you know, um, the rand that you have in October will not be the same val value of rand in December or let's say the next um, the next year, the next October. Let's say let's give it a year, the next uh, October. You know why? Because once you the your water bill is not going to be the same. Your construction material um, prices are not, not going, to, uh, going to be the same. Um, who what are you paying your laborer for those things are not going to be the same. Your plants and the rates for your plants are not going to be the same. So it's very important for you to understand the time value of your land and be able to price it according, uh, accordingly. When a lot of people go into um, pricing, right, and you're pricing your projects, a lot of people don't really take that into account. You kind of think that if... A sack of potatoes costs 90 rand now. It's going to kind of cost you 90 rand in a year's time. Construction doesn't work like that. And as much as for you, when you price for the client, it's going to be a locked in price for that year, but it's not going to be locked in in terms of your variables. So it's important for you to be able to not always strive to be the lowest, to be the lowest tenderer. You know, it's a lot of people go into projects and they lose. Like, and then you realize, you know what? Yo, yeah, this is the, the industry is bad. No, the industry is not bad. You're not looking at the time value of your money. So you have to be able to put that time value into your price. So whether you got escalations or negotiations that sometimes will negotiate you down, you still have a little bit of wiggle room to move. You know, so I think the first kind of uh, C that I wanted to touch on was being able to understand your ecosystem. In, in the right way, but also understanding the time value of money. Everything is centered around money. Your rocks are money. Your plants are money. Your The sand are money. The people who talk to you are money. The petrol are money. So it is money. So it's important for you to, to note 
all the different type of variations of those costs in order for you to be able to to see that profit. And I don't like talking about profit. I like talking more about being able to sustain because now let's, for instance, now you're starting off your first project and you're saying, okay, cool. This project is going to cost me 200K, right? 200K to actually, you know, do the works. And then I'm going to get plus minus the margins. Also, the margins in construction are disgusting, you know, so you're not looking at 10% here. You know, sometimes you get 10%, but um, no, it doesn't work like that, you know. Um, so we're looking at about three, three to six, seven in terms of percentage um, on, on just an average, you know, sometimes people that, that, that you got, you got a really good client and you really priced it great and it's a specialist product. So you're able to maneuver or you've negotiated the price really nicely. Um, you know, so it, it, it also depends, but it, it, you have to be able to be putting on, putting in to your price, those different variables. I think that's something that I'm also going to touch on. Um, I don't like, putting um putting it separately where i'm saying i'm going to help you price the bill oh last year bro i same construction guy um really taught me i thought i was frugal but i was not you know um you know when you get onto sites you realize that there's so much wastage yes we put on like a certain percentage for wastage but you realize that you lose so much money from just the wastage so that component alone um in terms of just pricing your bill has to be a heavy part of it like your in as much as you're going to put in like the the total wastage at the end or when you are pricing or whatever but you also i i'd really want you even if it's like a 0.0.02 you know into your pricing try putting it in it really helps it really helps um don't run to be the lowest tender you know, don't run to be the lowest subcontractor or contractor. You're not going to create sustainability that way. You're not, you know. Then you are moving from tendering for cupcakes and then now you're moving on to catering equipment and the next thing you're doing on construction projects. Like, what are you doing, bro? Like, like, what are you doing? You are a tender because you're not strategizing properly. So it's important. It's important. I, I think I'll break those things a little bit down. Um, maybe if you guys let me know, if you guys want us to strategically look at a boq document um and and how to set it i'll do that let me know let me know in the comments also you guys don't comment how what are we doing now i see likes and the thing is you guys watch the videos why are you commenting why are you not commenting why comment the second c would be compounds um compounds your um another uh, another important one compounds the value of your most expensive product um, versus the most quantity so there's a way that people move within construction it's like a trick um, when it comes to the way that you do your boqs right um, find the best Mm. But that's why you have to understand what you're doing. You know, like people will want to go and build a building, but you're not really understanding the components, hence the first C. So break down the different components, break down the quantities of those components, and then break down the price of those different components. Put in the nice margins in the biggest quantity. You know, people try, people will always, we, well, the smaller, the SMEs will reverse that. They'll put the smallest, uh, the, they'll put in the smallest margin in the biggest quantity. But then how are you making your money? You know, so I think to trick kind of the system. Okay, now we're not tricking the system because now I've told you. But like, for instance, most of in, in the stuff that I do, right? My my biggest quantity would be like the backfill. You know, I do retaining walls and um, structures and gabions and all of that. So I will have like my bases, which is my gabions. Um, depending on how tall, um, what's the meterage of that wall, um, it will determine what the compaction level and uh, level is like and how high it's going to go and all of that and compaction and all of that. So I realized in the projects that I've done that if you do not price the biggest quantity item on your bill effectively, taking onto, taking onto account that time value of money also, because now you're not just going to use this product now, you're also going to, you might have to buy it now, or you might, you might have to buy it now, keep it a little bit later, or you're going to use it throughout the project. So it's important for you to understand that time, that, that time value of money. And then understand your biggest quantity and then put in that margin there. We're not saying, I'm not saying now go crazy with margin now. Oh, okay, now I'm going to put in like 50% or 20%. I'm saying 
the most the way you're going to get most of the money is by limiting your wastage and limiting that and understanding the time value of money understanding the different components um and it's not it's not hard man um i feel like boqs are a little bit daunting when it comes to you know like so many so many pages and then you have to sign and you have to do all of these things but like the 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 matter of the fact is um the works part is is pretty is pretty small you know the contractual part is 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 a lot hence the de- document is so long but in terms of like the stuff that you are going to be doing when you're actually going into the mud it's 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 not that much it's being able to understand the ecosystem of what you are doing and you will not understand the ecosystem of what you are doing if you are just taking your chances you know if you are just you know pitching for stationery pitching for building works pitching for retaining wall well, you're not going to build i think i did a video i think it was last year sometime where we were talking about relationships around your product um and as much as as a contractor you are putting out a, a you are a service provider as i always say but you're also you got so many different components of products that you are going to move be moving around with so it's also important for you to be able to to be a sales person of your own company you know um the strategies that you're going to you're going to be using when you are pricing your bill is going to be so different to the strategies that you are going to be using when you are actually in the mud so there are two different strategies you can't be using the same margins you used in your bill on sites it's not going to work you're not going to make money and then you're going to think that the construction industry is crappy you're just not looking at it right you don't you're not understanding the components you're not doing the time value of money and more than anything you are not um manipulating the quantity versus price of the things that you are doing so if nothing else take that away from me and then the third c is cons- consumer consumer we don't say customer here we say consumer because when we think about um the uh, your output right your output is going to be ultimately consumed by somebody whether it is a walkway you know um you when 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 they are looking for proposals because now we we are not we are not tendering here when we we are doing proposals we are doing sustainable um proposals that have the consumer in mind it's always so It's always so pleasant when when a client sees that in in your proposal when you're putting out a proposal out of that project you have the consumer in mind because that's 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 at the end of the day that's that's who we are doing it for you know we can manipulate everything else but at the end of the day that structure would have to you know it have to do its job for the person that it's intended for you know that's what infrastructure is the you are building it for somebody so in everything that you are doing i think looking at the consumer you can either think about the consumer as your main contractor because he is going to be the consumer of that project um you can think about it in the way of the 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 end user um what are you doing are you doing a sports ground are you doing a building what type of consumer is it you know like a shop you're going to get your stuff from the architects and how the the things are supposed to move and and the dimensions from the the designers and 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 the engineers and all of that but i think as a contractor it's it's your job to kind of give birth to give birth to the final product you know you've got so many that's why we're always fighting with architects and and engineers you know you, you now you're telling me how my pregnancy is supposed to go you know i'm the one that's going to give birth to this yes you 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 are part of it you're part of the inception but you know it's, it's it's not you that is doing it you you are just giving me the measurements i'm lying i'm joking i'm joking all the architects and the engineers are going to are going to shout at me but i think that's the perspective that contractors come from it's like okay cool shop yes I've I've got it's a technical industry it's a technical field um I have to do things by the book but I also want a bit of my pizzazz into it and but you you I level 1 level 2 level 3 you there's no pizzazz in here you're not thinking about pizzazz right now all you're trying to do is you're trying to do the best job that you can do and you are trying to do it at the best possible time at the best possible price that is going to give you a comfortable margin in order for you to be able to move over to the next project um you're not always going to you're not always going to think about money and your projects the same for instance your first projects might be a loan from you know a mashonisa or a loan or maybe some funding you know like i'm ah uh, 
funding, yo, I, I, I still, we still need to talk about that. Um, there are so many avenues that have crazy, crazy, crazy return rates. And that also filters into the time value of the money. The money that you have used, that 200K, we, we used that example earlier on, that 200K that you in, in, initially invested into the project is not going to be the 200K that you're going to get out. But at the end of the day, all of the people that you have borrowed the money, the money from will have increase or, lo- or interest increase, um, interest on it. So the time value of the money that you've put in is not going to be the same. The same hundred rand that you've put in in order to be able to execute the project is not going to be the hundred rand that you're gonna you're gonna be paying back on your loan. So the value of that money is not going to be the same. You need to be able to understand that, and that's why time value of money is of utter importance. So. I think I'll leave it there. The three C's, um, they are the most important. Um, They are the way, they are things that, those are the things that I've picked up from the way that I've moved, um, the way that I've moved last year. And it's gotten me into a better point of me being able to see substantial margins um, at the end of the project. Um, Because We're not going to lie and say all of our project is going to make you the amount of money that you think it's going to. Um, It's it it doesn't it doesn't work like that. But once you understand the different type of components that you know that 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 you get from being part of the industry for a longer period of time, um, then you are able to kind of manipulate them. But now you know now I've cut you like five years of losing, and now you understand. So. Um, if if you want a little bit more and a little bit more of a breakdown in that, but you know what what I I think I've kind of I've kind of like put it in such a in in, in clear terms. I think you it's not we are not all we are not also we not only just looking at just the construction part of it. You can use these components in whichever field that you're in. You know I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that it's it's not right to tender for stationery, but let it be your thing. And you can use those components. I'm not saying that you can't tender for uh, PPE. Let it be your thing. So you can see the sustainability in it. I'm not saying that um, you're not supposed to uh, go into the building part of it. But let it be your thing. You know, like, let's let's find our niche. And I think that's when we'll see the sustainability in it. Um, what else 